What's up guys? Hi and welcome to Uncle Scott's Kitchen. Technically Uncle Scott's office today. The reason I am in here is I am at the computer and I want us to go through some footage and really help people really drill down and show start to finish on exactly how to slide an egg in a carbon steel skillet. It's something I show in darn near every one of my carbon steel pan uh, review videos. And normally it's a three to four minute process, start to finish, and I edit that down to 15 to 20 seconds to kind of keep a video moving along. However, um, sliding an egg is one of the things that kind of drives people crazy and they have trouble with it and people are asking for more depth. So we are going to go in depth today and I'm going to show the raw footage from start to finish for exactly how I slide an egg in a carbon steel skillet. Hope it helps some people out. Um, what I'm gonna do is try to put a uh, timer up on the video when we get it started. And if you remember, I did do another video with some uh, egg sliding tips, how to slide an egg in cast iron, carbon steel, and stainless steel skillets. Those videos, those clips were also edited. It was very fast. I have never shown the entire process start to finish. So that's what we're going to do in today's video. Now, a couple things I want to point out. Um, this is raw footage. Um, this was this is footage from that last pan review I put up with that Debouye uh, Mineral B uh, nine and a half inch skillet. And I took my own advice. I seasoned it once, not 10 times, not 15 times. It's not jet black. Um, just seasoned it once. I'm going to start cooking. And I set up a camera and just let the camera roll. And this is the very first thing I have cooked in this skillet. Um, the other thing I want to point out too that doesn't come through in the video here is the egg. Um, everything I'm going to say in today's video is very important for uh, learning how to slide an egg in a carbon steel skillet. Um, the egg, very important because it is at room temperature. So I have taken this egg out of the fridge. My fridge is at 34 degrees, uh, two degrees above freezing. And what you don't want to do is take an almost frozen egg out of your fridge and crack that into a hot pan and it just doesn't work. So you need to let your eggs warm up to room temperature or um, that takes a while. If you're in a hurry, what you can do is um, put them in a bowl of warm water for a few minutes but don't cook an almost frozen egg. Okay, so let's get started. Um, I'm just gonna let the camera roll and let's see if I can, I'll try and put a uh, timer up on this video so you can see how long some things take. And here we go. First time I have ever cooked anything in this pan. So the first thing I'm gonna do is check that seasoning. You got to have a good pan. The Debouillés are good pans, great pans. And then I'm checking that seasoning. You got to have a good seasoning on there. It doesn't have to be thick. It doesn't have to be jet black. But you can't have drips or spots or runs or stickiness or tackiness. It needs to feel like smooth, cold, hard metal when you run your fingers across the surface of the pan. Uh, got this guy heating up on my smallest gas burner at I think medium high or so. Now here you're going to need to experiment. Experiment a little because every pan, uh, pans come in different thicknesses, different sizes, burners are different, you got different stove tops. You're just going to have to experiment a little. This usually takes me about a minute and 20 seconds or so to uh, get my pan preheated. You'll also know that I'll move the pan around just a little bit. That's because I have a circular gas burner. And believe it or not, in the middle of the pan, there is a relatively cooler spot relative to the uh, parts of the pan that are directly over the flame. Uh, carbon steel doesn't uh, spread heat as efficiently as some other metals. So I move the pan around a little bit, try to get it heated as evenly as possible. And I'm specifically trying to get a little bit of heat in the middle of the pan. Next thing that's gonna happen is some butter is gonna go in. I believe this is room temperature butter. Um, we normally keep our butter on the counter and I'm going to use a good French tablespoon, which means a little bit more than a tablespoon of butter. And the butter is very important because it tells us two things. One, it tells us if the temperature of the pan is okay and it's going to tell us when to add the egg. Notice that the, the butter didn't explode in a flash of steam that would indicate the pan's too hot. It didn't just sit in one space 
and slowly um, move away. That would tell us the pan was too cool. It is crackling, melting, and, and uh, bubbling. And what those bubbles are, that's the, the water content of the butter uh, boiling and evaporating away. Once those bubbles stop, this is a good time to add your egg. And we may have to drill down on the butter a little bit more here in a bit. Notice I am not dropping that egg in from six or eight inches above the pan. I am gently laying that egg out in the pan. If you have trouble with that, you can crack your eggs into, uh, into a cup and then just kind of gently lay it out in there. In the meantime here, I am washing my hands because I've been holding raw eggs. And then I turn around and boom, everything slides here. And it's a very fun feeling, especially when you're doing this for the first time on camera. Getting that first egg to slide. And here I'm going to go for the flip. When I do my flip, it's more of a more of a roll than trying to flip the egg up in the air and kind of catch it like in a some sort of baseball glove or, or mitt. So it's more of a flip slash roll than an actual flip because I don't want that yolk to break. There we go more of a roll than a flip and then you just need to cook this until the uh, yolk is done the way you like it i'm using a little bit more heat and butter than normal here at first because it's a new pan and here's some advice if you're new and learning how to do this use a little extra heat and butter at first once you've got your eggs sliding you'll notice they kind of brown uh, a little more quickly than maybe you might be used to but then the next time you cook an egg subsequent eggs kind of dial that heat and butter back until you find the sweet spot. And here, um, if I'm going to use this pan repeatedly, I don't, I don't clean it with water. I just wipe it out with a paper towel or a wad of paper towels. And I kind of just let that butter remain as my uh, protective oil on the pan. So only rarely do I wash my egg pan or a pan I cooked eggs in with uh, soap or water. I normally just wipe it out and it is good to go. Now I want to talk about the butter just a little bit more. Butter, very, very important, very smart uh, food item, butter. And the reason butter is important is that it tells us several things. A, it's delicious, so it goes great with eggs to begin with. And you can do this, you can slide eggs using oil. Um, you don't have to use butter, but the butter gives us several indicators that really let us know um, uh, when to add our eggs and whether the pan is hot enough. As I mentioned, if the butter just goes crazy and uh, just flashes in a flash of steam, like really splattering, then you know the pan is too hot. If it just barely melts, you know the pan is too cool. When it goes in and just bubbles and crackles, I want to drill down on this more, um, that is the liquid, the water content of butter boiling and evaporating evaporating away. Now uh, we know that butter is made up of fat, uh, milk, milk fat, milk solids, but it also has a lot of water in it. And what do we know about water? Um, unsurprisingly, water boils at its boiling point, to be kind of uh, facetious here, but it's true. We need to remember that. Uh, 212 Fahrenheit or so at sea level, um, 100 degrees Celsius in the incomprehensible um, European metric system, I guess. And um, where I am here in Utah, at our elevation, it's about 205 or 206 degrees. So a little bit cooler um, here at a little bit higher altitude. But when you put the butter in the pan, that liquid water is going to boil. And what that does, because, because water boils at its boiling point, you can't get 300 degree water without a pressure cooker. Um, when you put butter in a pan, any kind of water, it's gonna regulate the temperature of the pan because if it's 212, it's going to evaporate. It's going to boil and evaporate. It can't be 230, it can't be 280. It boils at its boiling point. And what that does is regulate the temperature of the pan. Um, we know that the, the water is still in there. If the butter is still bubbling, that's the, the water boiling away. And when that bubbling stops, you know that the water is gone 
and then the, the uh, temperature of the pan will begin to rise. Um, it's just like my wife, when she makes candy, there's um, peanut brittle, there'll be water and sugar and what have you in the pan. Once the water is boiled away, then the temperature of the uh, pan starts to rise. Same thing with uh, butter in a carbon steel when you're frying an egg. And it turns out that from the end of the time the butter stops bubbling, there's about a 10, 15 second window when the temperature of that pan starts to rise. If you let it go too long, the butter is going to brown and you don't necessarily want brown butter on your fried eggs. But you got about 5, 10, 15 seconds, there's a window there, and that's when you add your egg. So the butter, very important, tells us if the temperature of the pan is correct, it tells us when to add the egg, and it's delicious. And so very, very important, the egg. Also, um, I mentioned laying that egg out gently into the pan. Don't just drop it in there. And I think if everything goes correctly, I don't know what exactly what happens on a molecular level, but I don't think the egg ever actually touches the uh, carbon steel of the pan. So you got carbon steel, then you got a layer of seasoning, then you got a layer of butter fat, and if you gently lay that egg out, I think it has enough time to kind of create, I don't want to say skin or surface, but if you kind of lay it out on that butter, I think that's when it becomes, we always say hockey puck, it's actually more close to a uh, puck on an air hockey table, I would say, where that just kind of floats around on that uh, little thin layer of butter, and I don't think it ever actually hits the uh, surface of the carbon steel. Who knows about that? So let's run through the factors again, just so everybody has these down. No almost frozen eggs. Your eggs need to be room temperature or somewhere thereabout. They can't be extremely cold. Also, you need a good quality carbon steel skillet. Uh, the Debouillets, I always recommend those are good quality carbon steel skillets. You need a decent seasoning on the pan. You can't have any sticky gunk on the pan. You need to preheat the pan correctly and as evenly as possible. You will have to experiment just a little to find the correct burner for your stove and uh, how long it's going to take. Then you need to use butter. Butter not only is delicious with eggs, it tells us if the pan is at the right temperature and also when to add the eggs. Then you need to add your eggs gently. Uh, you don't just drop them in, add them gently to the pan. Then let them set up for 10-15 seconds or so and give that pan a little goose. And they should slide around. And once you do it a time or two, you'll get the hang of it, and then you'll realize you can get nonstick eggs in your carbon steel. Then you might sear a steak. You can do a high temp sear, and then there's no reason to have one of those awful chemical coated nonstick skillets anymore. You can get rid of those and kind of start down your uh, start out on your carbon steel journey. Okay, I hope this helps. Uh, give it a try. If you get a sliding egg, let me know in the comment section below. If it doesn't work for some reason, also let me know and I will do what I can to help you get it sorted out. Thank you for watching. We'll see you again next time on Uncle Scott's Kitchen.